Here we are. This is so cool. This is... I can't get over how amazing it is to sit in my own car in a simulator. Hey guys, Jimmy here. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I get to drive my Mazda, my Time Attack Mazda. You know the one, the bright mint thing with like the massive bench wing on the back of it. Fairly subtle car, I think it's fair to say. But you might notice I'm not actually at a race circuit, which is a very odd thing to say because in my mind, I'm still very much a sim racer. But of course, that car is real. I've touched it. I've smelt it. I've seen its oil just pour out the car all over Druids. <laughs> and that's because today I'm going to be driving it in sim. So you guys probably know as well my main channel sponsor which is Schissingveld which is uh, headed by mad scientist Neil Schissingveld who does just loads of weird shit <laughs> in his spare time. I mean the man has made the shed that I used to live in into a raceable vehicle in Automobilista which says about as much as you need to know about him really. But when he puts his mind to it he's actually very competent with things like physics and getting a car looking very nice. And with his help and the help of a 3D modeler I have something very very special to show you. Just before I show you that though you might notice this very lovely t-shirt that I'm wearing. It is of course a very rare self shield. This is the updated Time Attack MX-5 shirt complete with our sort of Frido and objective for actually racing just don't come last for crying out loud and it also has this absolutely amazing design in the back i really love how this shirt came out and as of now it's now available in my merch store so if you're interested in getting one of these for yourself and supporting the team then there's a link down below in the description so here we are in what i like to affectionately call my meme install of automobile easter which has some certain curse mods in but also now has the mint x5 time attack car and this thing looks Amazing, I can't wait to show you. And there it is! My MX-5 in Automobilista. And this model is so accurate. It is ridiculously accurate. Down to even, I don't know if you can see that there, the tread on the tyres. We have to run a spec tyre in the Time Attack series, a Pirelli tyre, a Trofeo R I think it is. And there it is, modelled in the simulator. It's so surreal to see my car in a sim and now I get to go and drive it. Does that make sense? Like all the stickers in the right place, the wheels are the same, all the cutouts are the same, the windows are the same, the ridiculous wing is the same, even the diffuserless bottom half of the car with the me mental center exit exhaust, that's the same as well. It's, it's amazing to see it all. Right down to the UNOS badge on the back that I still haven't taken off because I like to think it's sort of keeps the car what it was when I first bought it. And of course in terms of power and weight it's exactly the same as well. About 322 brake horsepower which you think is roughly what it was making on the high boost and it weighs just over 2300 pounds or if, of course you're a normal person just over a thousand kilograms. Uh, it's just so cool. I can't tell you how amazing it is. I'm hoping at some point we can make it a, uh, a public mod but for now it is private but I can still show you it. Now, of course, given that we're in a simulator and we have a car that's mine here, it would be just incorrect for me not to take this thing around the Nord Cypher and see what sort of time it would set. And this is interesting because this is something that I would like to do at some point, although it would be difficult to get this car around the Nord Cypher because it would not pass uh, the German MOT process, TÜV or whatever it's called. It would, it would not get through that at all. There is actually a real-life record for us to try and beat in the sim that time is a 733.8 bridge to gantry set by the guys over at one lap heroes i'll link that in the <laughs> i'll link that in the description below because it's an awesome lap and you should go and watch it and i want to see if theoretically our car can beat that time here we are this is so cool this is I can't get over how amazing it is to sit in my own car in a simulator. I feel like this is sort of the wrong way around, but as the sim racing there, this just blows my mind. It is so accurate. Look at the onboard here. Look at the um, the cockpit. All these buttons are exactly the same in real life. The gear knob is the same. That ducting is identical to the real thing as well. In fact, I can tell you how to arm that goddamn ignition switch there. It's it's all just one to one what it is in real life. If you don't believe me, go and check out the video of me driving this thing. It's it's amazing. But let's get out on circuit 
and drive this thing. Now the only downside using this rig is I haven't got my shifter here, so I am having to use the paddles. I'll remember. I'll try and remember to use the uh, the clutch whenever I can. But this car is going to be a sequential very soon, so uh, and maybe the one last run with the uh, H pattern gearbox. So it's a six speed in this mod, and we'll just warm it up slowly out onto circuit in my little Mazda. This is so cool. Oh, this is amazing. So. I'm going to do bridge to gantry, which is why you've got a timer up there in the top right-hand uh, corner there. When I get to the other bridge next time round, I'm going to send it, and we're going to stop it at the gantry, because that's where that 733 was set. It wasn't a full lap, it was cutting out the straight there, which is a good thing, because this thing, if we're being fair to it, ha it doesn't quite have a very high top speed. We've got 320 horsepower, which is quite a lot for a standard MX-5. But when you're a bit of a prat like me and you bolt on a massive front splitter and a massive bench on the back of the car, you find yourself encountering a little bit of drag. And I'll show you what I mean on this next straight. So there you go, finally starting to wind up a little bit. My foot is glued to the ground. And you see we're struggling to get over 200 k page. The graphs is on our side now. We're starting to speed up a little bit, but 220 k is about what we expect through here. It's about our top speed in the straight line eventually, so it's not the fastest thing in the world. But we do have that little bit of aero helping out. And this was sort of my, like, the dream that I wanted to do before COVID struck, is that I wanted to have this car at events. And then, of course, there'll be, you know, a crowd comes along to watch, and we'd have a stand there with a simulator on, with this car on, that you could go and drive whilst the real car is driving, you know, just on behind you on the circuit. It'll be a great way to show that people can go from simulator to the real thing. It's still a bit of a fantasy of mine to do that, and I really hope we can get it done, but this, having this in sim, is a massive step towards that happening. And oh, I'm just excited. And what's even cooler about this is because we have all the data from this car. Race control is on for cutting the track. All right. What's even cooler is because we have all the data for this car, so we can feed that into the simulator and try out things to get an idea of their work but before we even get to the circuit I just I know of course that's something that F1 teams have been doing for ages but on this sort of level of club racing I suppose it's a really awesome as a sim enthusiast getting to sort of flex that muscle and getting to show that there really is a lot of benefit to be had from sim work we're even thinking about trying a rotary engine in the car in game to see how it would handle Things like that, you know, things that we just couldn't do in real life. So, uh, as long as we have the numbers for it, we can get a fairly decent idea of how it would handle. Of course, we, we don't understand the reliability of it, but I just, I feel like a massive nerd for this all this stuff. It, it, it really makes me enthusiastic and passionate about getting this car out and getting it fast. Just a shame it couldn't happen this year, really. I had a couple of things that set us back, but that happens sometimes, you know, and that is just real racing. But it means that we can really develop it over the winter and make it all those sort of sharpened edges that we have on the car, both metaphorically and literally, can be sort of ironed out and we can have a, a proper weapon by the time it comes around next season, which is our goal. So, you know what? Watch out, yellow flag. I've actually decided that instead of a running start, that wouldn't quite be fair to my guy in uh, the V6 Mazda. We're going to pull out of this bit here, or sort of come out of this area here, then gun it to give ourselves a better speed onto the straight. It would save us, or well, add about a second to our time, but it's a bit more fair that way, and I, I want to make sure that we, uh, we are close to it. So we're going to roll down here. As soon as I see this last bottle, we're going to punch it, and we're away. So... Oh, she still picks up, though. There you go. And we're away. Bridge again three in our very own real-life race car. Turbo MX-5, Minty. Up to the first section now, gonna be careful with brakes here. No ABS in this car, so you've got to be quite easy on the way. We've got a bit of a downforce to help us slow down, but still gonna be careful because it does peel off very quickly, then we have to rely on that tyre, which is not very sticky at all. Ah, wide there. Bad Jimmy! Come on, you can drive, remember to drive, mate. Over the crest. Third gear. Not even in third gear, seconds a bit short. Understeer big time mechanically there, trying to not let understeer just dictate my lap. Gonna be a big deal here. Even though I'm running the rear wing quite low actually compared to 
the front end, which is non-adjustable, but in real life that's what we do. The rear wing is at its minimum setting. Trying to overcome some of that drag. Up the hill now. Sift gear over the rise. We flat through here. No little blend, little blend. Oh, then they do a big blend there. Just started to push out a little bit. Now come on. Come a little force in the push through. I believe 225 k's nearly. There it is. Blend through here. Oh, turns really well at speed as you'd imagine. And then heavy on the brakes down the bottom here. Third gear. Tucker in. Ah, oh, a bit wide. Just again, understeer. Then smash it on the way out. <laughs> the power's there. The driver isn't. Down the hill now. So fast down here. Just momentum picks up massively. 225 again. On the brakes. Chuck it over the inside. Then we start scrubbing off the speed into the corner. Don't worry too much about the line through here. As long as you're lined up for this left-hander. Second gear really is a weapon in this car. Okay, not a bad first sector. High rebel tree. We're on a fast one. Well, ish. Slow it down big time. Oh, just again, missing that apex. There's a nice little groove in there that I just didn't quite get into. Got to break early here. We're going downhill. Brakes in this version of the car lock up a lot more than they do in real life. Turn it in there, they get into the groove nice. Of course I'm driving at, you know, 95%. In real life you don't really drive at that. We're driving at 100% really, I guess, of all these massive slides out the corners, but... Take that into account too. And I've got no traffic on my uh, British gantry, so that's always going to go in my favour. But I get out of the corner nice and early. And now uphill, this is where we're going to struggle the most compared to that V6 and of course the other Mazda as well. It's only got a little rear wing, has got a front splitter on it but a bit more, um, a bit less dragging than this thing. So we're going to lose time all the way up the hill here. Gravity and trying to push through the air at this speed. Take fifth through there. It's, it's still slides an entry, probably take a bit more speed through there but it's just about being confident and I'm not really at this point. Same here too. We're going to break just for the hump and we're going to hammer the brakes. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Second gear. Well, we're at the five minute mark. I think we're oh going to be a little bit over actually at this point. Get in. Down the bottom there. One wheel on the bottom, one wheel on the bank in there. Nice. 511 as we come into the last sector. This is where you have to really push to gain time around this circuit. Easy, easy, there you go, nice. Watch out for these curbs. Getting early at this one. Not too bad, come on. Try to balance the brake and throttle through here, get the car moving in a nice way. Been an okay middle sector so far. Bit too much speed into there though, understeered out. Carry less speed in here than you think you do. Shouldn't have taken second there, but it's got tempted. Minute 33 to go. Oh, it's getting a bit a bit ragged now as we're pushing. And I'm getting sweaty. Try hard in about a minute to go. Come on. I've only got to get to the bridge. To the gantry, sorry. Come on, Minty. I use the aero to turn the car and the tyres take over, but the tyres don't really take over. They just sort of flounder. Come on, 33 seconds. Easy down the bottom. Come on! It's looking okay, come on! There's the bridge! 10 seconds, come on! 33 A to beat! Come on! And just! Only just! 728.9 bridge to gantry in the mad Min MX5. Oh man. Now, that was throwing a car around at like 100%. I made a couple of mistakes in there, of course, but to do that time and only just beat 
the one lap heroes time of 7.33.8 just goes to show how quick their lap time is because I guarantee you they were not chucking the car around the way I was there. I was no, no regard for the car, no regard um, for wear or tear, anything like that, smashing their gears every time through and I only just beat them. So what that tells me is that we need less drag significantly on this thing. <laughs> to be able to make some more use of that top speed but to get to do that lap in my car and watch it go around and be in my car to drive it in sim is amazing it's such a cool little novelty and i really hope that we can share a version of this with you guys soon so you get to enjoy this car as much as i do just look at it go man it's so cool watching this go around so slidey though it really is a diffuser in the floor it really does but uh guys i really hope you enjoyed this video as i said it is one of these weird privileges that I, I seem to get for some reason. I don't really know if I deserve it or not, but I get to do this. Drive a car that I get to drive in real life in a simulator and be excited about it. It's amazing. Um, I used to always dream about having my car in a simulator, even my road car, but to have my race car in a simulator and get an idea of how quick it is around one of my favorite circuits in the world is Truly special indeed, and I hope that one day I do get to take this thing to the circuit and have a go at that bridge to Gantry and see what sort of time we can do. But for now, it's goodbye, so thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. You can subscribe as well if you want. And as I said before, this shirt now, uh, supporting our little team, is now available down below if you want to get your own version of that. There's a link below in the description. A massive thank you as always to my patrons and sponsors. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and let me get to a point where I get to do stuff like this. It Truly is an honor. Take care, everyone. Have an awesome day. I'll see you all next time. Say goodbye, Minty. There's the wing. <laughs> I like how you see the wing first. <laughs> oh, what a life. <laughs>